I don't know why hey. I cut my hair because this shadow makes it look like it was exactly the same as it was. <laughs> so yeah, someone was pointing that out in the comments last week, it's, so it, I had to it's, take it's, a look. It's real short. Yeah, <laughs> you look like you got like Dexter the Dream Hemsley hair going on from the identical. <laughs> <laughs> Lean forward like this. There's a little mm -hmm. bit of an afro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. And me, it just I've got a hat on, so it just looks like there's a killer sitting behind me, and I can see his shadow. Um, we got out of Deep Water Horizon, um, and we learned the important lesson of never putting John Malkovich in charge of an oil rig, of anything. Never yeah. put John Malkovich in charge of anything. Except for acting. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. As soon as he walked, as soon as he walks on screen, I'm like, oh well. See, there's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Right there, right. You, you you put a fucking movie villain in charge of an oil. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this happened. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't much sold on the trailers for this. No, because the trailers. We're, we're kind of, it's kind of the same thing that happened with uh, Lone Survivor. Uh huh. For me, which. The movie Lone Survivor wasn't bad. I felt it got a little preachy, but it was a good movie. Yeah, I enjoyed but it. But I got so fucking burned out on that trailer. Yeah, I And the did way too. they promoted that movie with the mm. interviews of the real guy and stuff. Like, I understand it's based on a real story and shit. Mm. But I don't... I don't want to know what's going to happen in the... Like, even based on it, if I'm not invested in it... Uh-huh. Like, don't tell me everything. No, yeah, I got... Uh, I, I, I remember getting really burned out by that trailer, too, uh, for Lone Survivor, but then Ryan and I went to go see it, and we actually really enjoyed it quite a bit. So I kind of had that mindset going into this one. Like, granted, we weren't quite as bombarded with trailers for this as Lone Survivor. I got this trailer a lot. I did, yeah, I did, too, but to the extent of Lone Survivor, that was, like, every movie. Yeah. Like, for what felt like a few months. Yeah. Um, and now uh, this movie, the trailer, like it, it started to wear on me a little bit and it looked like it had some of those <laughs> Armageddon moments. I will yeah. see my family again. Like uh -huh. that kind of shit. But then in the movie, it's just like, yeah, the, all those moments are still in the movie, but you realize they're not these long protracted hero speeches and moments. They're just moments. Yeah. No, th that I, I, I went into this movie with that mindset, figuring, like, you know what, I, I'll, I'll probably enjoy this movie, because I did like Lone Survivor, even though, like, the ad campaign didn't yeah. sell it on me, and the, the the only time Peter Berg really went, like, Armageddon was Battleship, which yeah. was, like, yeah. a, a contract movie that I think he had to do, yeah. um, and I really actually enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. <laughs> no, th this was honestly fantastic. It yeah. was a really great film. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little worried in the beginning because there was all these shots of people filling up their gas tanks uh -huh. and gas stations and shit, and I was like, oh, dear God, <laughs> if this is a pro-oil movie <laughs> about an exploding oil ship. But it wasn't. It really wasn't. No, I mean, Peter Berg, between this and his last movie, I mean, he tends to, he tends to stay on topic pretty well. Yeah. He, and even, what I, honestly, this is well, like... it's he didn't politicize it, is really... No, yeah. no, no, no. I uh, mean, it still would have been on topic, but he didn't politicize it, which was really nice, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't go into this movie thinking that that was going to happen. Um, I, I didn't either, but I was a little worried in the first few minutes. Right. Um, just just the, some of the shot choices and stuff, but, mm -hmm. you know. In in terms of dis disaster movies, like, this, was, th yeah. this is one of the best I've seen in probably fucking years. No, in a really long time. <laughs> yeah, this I, was a... Well, and they kept it small. You yeah. know, that's, that was the thing. Like, yes, it's a disaster movie, mm -hmm. but it's a big boat. Mm -hmm. It's not the world ending, uh -huh. you know? No, beyond that, though, like, it doesn't do what you would typically... See, the tropes you would see in, like, a disaster movie with a lot of effects going on and stuff. It isn't like he finds out his wife is pregnant or something yeah. like that and then goes off to the ship or like, you know, he's one guy is separated from his wife and like, oh, this is what brings them back together. It doesn't do any of that. Like, yeah, the wife is in the movie because he's got a wife and at one point, he, a couple points, he's Skyping with her and that yeah. honestly just sets up his character at the beginning of the film. The movie really tells us all we need to know about the characters. It 
it makes them feel like real people and not just yeah. kind of disaster movie yeah, characters. Yeah, it had the the wife and the daughter in this and it but it wasn't they weren't just like dressing to build the character. Yeah. Like I mean at the same time this movie could have existed without those characters being in it, mm -hmm. but it didn't like you know, it wasn't there just to pull your heartstrings. It no, was, it it wasn't. It was actually it was well written enough to where it really kind of pushes the story forward a bit because yeah. like it it works in the thing with like his daughter is having like a uh, what is the project she's oh, working on which taming is, the dinosaur yeah which is basically which is basically what the movie uses to explain to the audience what he does yeah but it worked like it was a way to incorporate his family life and also really giving us pretty vital information that we and, need and about the this movie and and but it also did involve the only shot of the movie that I was just like, oh, really, you got to do that, which was the foreshadowing shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was uh -huh. the only part of the movie where I was like, really, <laughs> <laughs> like really, because <laughs> they're, they're like, I guess in class to show, mm. get an idea of what her dad does to her class. What she's gonna do is she takes a can of coke, turns it upside down, mm -hmm. shoves a metal straw into it, and then fills it with honey. Yeah, which. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, I guess that would be a clever way. But then, of course, at the kitchen table with them all sitting there, it erupts. It's just like <laughs> my thing about really. <laughs> but, I, but twenty minutes more into the movie, you completely forgot that happened. No, totally. Like I'm just now thinking about it as you're talking about it. The only thing that <laughs> that threw me off about that shot because like I kind of went really in my head too, but it was more so because they want that foreshadowing in there, so the camera lingers on it in yeah. a while. Which means the characters are just sort of, I guess, standing there watching this happen and not, not cleaning this shit up. Like, no but, one bothers to, like, just put their thumb over it. Yeah. <laughs> but if if that's the biggest complaint we have in and a disaster movie, <laughs> then, then oh, this yeah. movie's exactly. really good. Exactly. No, this, <laughs> this was an excellent movie. When it, oh, God, when the shit starts in this movie, like, as soon as shit starts blowing up and the oil spills over and everything like it doesn't stop like no. this movie it does not get old it does not get boring it maintains its intensity well it keeps the pace going yeah it, it, it's it's a it, I, I won't say like Okay, there's a build to where shit goes bad. Uh -huh. But once shit goes bad, it doesn't do the peaks and valleys no. thing. And it doesn't like skyrocket. It uh -huh. just it like it goes and then it slightly angles up. Mm -hmm. Like it's a really nice steady pace. It is because the movie is first and foremost more interested in its characters than it is showing special effects. Which was great. Yeah, which I mean, was I, really relieving about, the, about this movie. Obviously, there were some special effects, but well, they totally, were, yeah. But they were used to like to good. Mm hmm. They were used well. Yeah, know? yeah. It's not. It's not a summertime movie where, like, they're using big special effects to kind of bring in an audience and, oh, we're showing off our new toys with CGI yeah. and stuff like that. Like, no, the special effects are in there because, well, that's what the, that's yeah. the kind of movie it is. But it, it still focuses on all of its characters as this movie yeah. is going on. It's still suspenseful as shit, not because we're watching stuff blow up. Not, not only because we're watching stuff blow up, but because, like there's these people that we actually really care about in the yeah. situation and we want to see them get the fuck out of this burning ass oil yeah. rig. <laughs> no, it, yeah, no, it, they, they did a, honestly, I, I really, besides that one stupid can't, I can't think of anything really wrong with the movie at all. Well, there was one thing that was, that was kind of wrong, but it's okay. The projector corrected it. There is kind of a corny song that's oh, yeah. the ending credits. And the kind of boost, like, audio out. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? Mute, like, the audio for the... At the end of it, 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 it does what you would think at, at, the end of, uh, at the end of this. It's showing us real footage of the people, and it's showing, like... Pictures of the people who <laughs> None died. None of whom look like the actors. No, they, 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 wow. They sh they showed like the lead guy who Mark Wahlberg plays, and I was just like, why didn't they just get John C. Riley? Because <laughs> yeah. he looks just like John C. Riley uh -huh. with a buzz cut. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kurt Russell looks more more like his character her character from Stargate, but aged. Yeah, <laughs> than he does the guy he's playing. And so there's this 
there's this country song that's playing at the ending credits. I'm like, eh, okay, that's not very good, but all right. And then it just went mute. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that solves that issue, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's in. Maybe that's just part of the movie, though. They only had the rights <laughs> to use like forty seconds of this song. Speaking of rights. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So going in this movie, I was like, "All right, Deepwater Horizon. It's the BP spill in the Gulf of Mexico." Mm-hmm. I. And somehow, not only did they throw out BP. A lot. Yeah. Like, more than I expected them. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, they're going to have to mention BP. Yeah. But somehow they got the logo rights. The logo, like, it's on, like, Malkovich and the other BP people's. Yeah. When they're there, it's the BP logo and everything is, yeah. like, on their shirt. Like, like, I don't know if it makes a difference when you're making a historical Film no, it's a, I, it's a copyrighted logo. Yeah, that. Yeah, I man, like I. I mean, I, if you're making, even if you're making a documentary, you got to get the rights to like screen it. Yeah. You know? There's some. There's yeah, I mean, there's some issues where it, it's different if it's a historical film or something. But I don't know what it is. Uh, Ryan would know. Yeah. Like fuck, he went to school for this. <laughs> but I was thinking the same thing. I was like, well, I guess <laughs> the BP is like. Why well, don't it's own up to it? I guess. No, like, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, well, we can't deny it. Uh huh. And if we sued them, it, we'd look really bad. If we say no. We also look bad. Fuck it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> like Lone Survivor was good. Sure. <laughs> That's uh, the, the head of BP's a big Peter Berg fan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the head of BP is like, well, Lone Survivor is about a bunch of soldiers that die, but it's not anti military. <laughs> so maybe. So maybe it's a pro BP. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. well, think of all the good things the spill caused. <laughs> it, it, it took care of the shark's jerry curl for months. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> No, I, I highly recommend... BP, recomm bringing new meaning to the words fish oil. <laughs> See, that's that's why they said yes to letting yeah. them use their logos. <laughs> sure. No, this... I highly recommend this movie, yeah. honestly. No, that was that was a fun sit, and I didn't... Mm -hmm. I really, honestly, did not expect to... Well, like, I expected it to be a decent movie. Uh-huh. Because uh, besides Battleship, I don't think Peter Berg makes bad movies. Mm. I didn't expect to honestly enjoy it, though. And I did honestly enjoy did. this movie. I enjoyed the hell out yeah. of this film. From the acting, from the... All the, the acting's great. Yeah. Like, and they did a really good job, like, getting good character actors in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, fucking, uh... Ethan Suppley's yeah, in this. Yeah, I, I see Ethan Suppley in anything, and I'm part of my brain is always like, I'm at least partially in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sat through, I don't know how many seasons of uh, My Name is Earl I sat through just because I liked Ethan Suppley in that show. Yeah. And my roommate at the time loved that show. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw most of the first season of that, really nothing beyond, it's, beyond it that. It wasn't terrible. Mm -hmm. It wasn't great either, but... Yeah. <laughs> it, it was charming in a way yeah jason lee can get a laugh out of me yeah <clears throat> um no for the uh the action is incredibly well edited like this is a very well pieced together yeah. film whoever did the sound editing mm -hmm. fantastic Lord god like, that was, yeah it's not often sound editing sticks mm -hmm. out to me in a movie yeah. but this one it really did no. because cause it did that thing where you know, it, it, it's something that happens in action movies a lot now, and disaster movies especially. When things get loud, it gets real quiet. Mm -hmm. But it was used in really good effect in this movie. Mm -hmm. So, like, like oh, yes, uh, instead of just, like, people being dazed, but it's taking that quiet moment to really, like, focus in yeah. on characters' faces and what's mm -hmm. happening, like... It was it was used to good effect in this. Yeah, because you can still sh hear shit going on in yeah. the background, even when it's having those like Wahlberg and the girl on top yeah. at the at the very end. Um, you can still hear just like think shit pinging off a of glass, metal falling on metal, just 
earlier in the movie you see like just shit fly up towards the glass almost like someone's standing outside of it with a machine gun just shooting yeah. inside of it and you hear that throughout the movie just whether it's actually going on in the scene we're looking at or whether it's just somewhere in the background that's still going on yeah <laughs> um and this was kind of it was sort of last minute we were seeing it tonight because originally it was going to be uh Mrs. Peregrine and um, Masterminds. Yeah. <laughs> Not Which that we I... got a trailer for tonight. Did we? No, no, we didn't. Never mind. I'm, um, gonna, I'm thinking of something else. We got a trailer for the new Zach Galifianakis. Oh, that, yeah. uh, keeping up with the Joneses, yeah. yeah. Um, not that I wanted to see Masterminds over this movie, but that's just what was originally planned. And... Uh, but they they bumped up the time. Like Masterminds was at nine thirty, and this one was at ten. I'm glad we went and saw this. Honestly. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, uh huh. It's not often I sit here and smile through a whole review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice feeling. It's like last week when, like, God, how come Dave hates everything in the comments? A couple comments like, how come Dave hates everything? And I responded and was like. I mostly send them to bad movies. Like, it's not like it's you sitting there and the other person always loves it other than yeah. you. It's like, usually the other person with you, like, yeah. nine times out of ten also doesn't like the movie. But, you know, <laughs> 19 times out of 20, it's a terrible movie you send me to, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Dave didn't like Medea Christmas and <laughs> Batman v Superman and... Other shit, shit yeah. we've seen over the how, years. How dare he not just suck it up and say it's good? <laughs> I did like last week where someone said because we were talking about the the original uh, Magnificent Seven, yeah. which, but I'll get to this in a second. But um, said something like up next on another episode of Dave hates the classics. <laughs> <laughs> I admit as much. There is a certain like. I don't like all the classics. I I don't like most of them, but it's mm -hmm. but that's just that's always been the case for me. I understand their classics. I understand their value. Mm -hmm. I I don't judge people for liking them. No, I'm the but, same way. But like I don't like sitting through those fucking movies. I wouldn't say like, I hate most of the classics, but there's just plenty that I don't like. But for me, you know, most of the time, like. They're not terribly well directed or acted or written. Mm. Like some of them are. Mm. Like like anything Hitchcock made is mm. fucking golden. Mm. Like and there's some other ones too. But for the most part, like yeah, the, like that era of filmmaking from you know the, the 40s to the early to mid 70s. For the most part, not my bag. I could think of plenty of stuff from the '60s that I really like. There's, liked a lot. there's some. Um, if I'm watching stuff, honestly, if I'm watching stuff from the '40s or '50s or even earlier than that, uh, more often than not, it's the B movies. Oh, those the B matinee monster movies. Yeah. I love those, mm -hmm. but they're not classics. I, uh, even though I, my God, of course there would be some people just being that guy for no reason, because we were saying the original Magnificent Seven instead of Seven Samurai. Okay. It, it's a, the new one is a Western that's called the Magnificent Seven, just like the one it's a remake of. It's not a remake of the Seven Samurai. It's a remake of the other Western called the Magnificent Seven. That was a remake. That that, um, that America, was a remake yeah. of the Seven... That was a remake of the Seven Samurai. This one is a remake of the Yule Brenner Western. My God, sit your snide ass film school motherfucking condescending ass up. Fuck. Especially since we talked about the Seven Samurai. Oh, we did. Briefly, we talked about the Seven Samurai. Uh -huh. I mean, we didn't go into great detail, but we briefly talked about it. We acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. Like... Like, this isn't fucking <laughs> film history with Brad and Dave. It's fucking... But it should be. Yo. <laughs> These are the same There's people. the new series, Film History with Brad and Dave, <laughs> yeah, where I'm we just going. make shit up. <laughs> I do that every week on the Cinema Snob. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> 
<laughs> Those are the same people who are bitching when we reviewed that Thing prequel, and when we were talking about the original. Of course, we're referring to the John Carpenter one, because that's what it's a prequel to. <laughs> Not the Thing from Another World. Fuck off with that being that guy shit. Oh. Oh, and it's just... Personally, I'm a little sick of remakes right mm. now, but that seems like a quarter of the big movies we get every year now are remakes. Mm -hmm. But I will say that sometimes remakes are better than the originals. It's rare, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's the sometimes case. Sometimes it happens. Uh, John Carpenter's The, the thing, thing is yeah, better. No shit. Is better than Thing from Another World. <laughs> um, this movie. Back is on a, topic. Yeah. The, this movie is a better remake than. <laughs> I can't, yeah. I can't even think of another oil movie off the top of my head. <laughs> Armageddon. Armageddon. This movie, it's a remake of Armageddon, and it's so much better. This is what they did before they went to the asteroid. It's way better acted and much more compelling. <laughs> better directed. How too. hilarious would this movie have been if they had used the cast from Armageddon? Oh, so just good. Just to give Michael Bay the finger. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, the cast in this was great, mm -hmm. but you could easily see, like, Affleck in the... <laughs> Bruce Willis, Affleck, Fickner. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton would be the Malkovich role. Yeah. I had to stop myself and think for a second. I was like, wait, was Malkovich in Armageddon? Like, no, okay. I don't think he was. <laughs> Belushi is Ethan Supley. It would be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to end up seeing Masterminds or not. I, maybe if I have time. But uh, next week, uh, uh, I think is Girl on the, on the Train. And yeah, we're starting Oscar season early. Well, this yeah. was probably the start of Oscar season, or at least maybe the, the I people mean, this, bidding for Oscars. Yeah, this will get some like sound nominations. No, yeah, um, as it should, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe special effects because I'll say like mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of fire in this. Yeah, and there was a lot of special effects, but they didn't feel like overt special effects most of the time. No. Yeah. So. Mm -mm. But there is a Star Wars movie coming out, so <laughs> special effects is probably cinched up. Maybe. I mean, Ex Machina won it last year. That's true. <clears throat> but, yeah, we'll, we'll be, but what the fuck comes out next week? See ya. Bye, kids! <laughs>